All right, Cowherd, did Westbrook go too far? Cross the line here. Listen, the fans got in his head. The press got in his head. Ricky Rubio got in his head. This was not a great series for Westbrook. Forget the shooting. There's a lot of pressure. I think he was hearing it. You know, hey, man, you got Paul George and Carmelo, Stephen Adams. I just, I think he went from Mr. Triple Double to Mr. Nothing But Trouble uh, in this series. I think his brand shifted. I think when people, wow. I think before yeah, this series, when you thought of Westbrook much. before this series, you are like, he's the most dynamic player in the league. I think you watch this series and you're like, he's got to get it together. They got to stop enabling him. I, I, Fans, media, Rubio. I, I agree with you. And look, I started out last year championing his MVP, this year defending him. I've sat on this show and defended him against your attacks for a long attacks. time. Attacks. Attacks for a long time. <laughs> he flipped me in this series. He looks mentally weak. He, Ricky Rubio, just like you said, baited him into a one-on-one -on -one confrontation on the court. It wasn't about a team game. It was a, can I shut Ricky Rubio down? Now fans and this uh, subtle insinuation that Utah fans are somehow worse than fans other places, th that's a joke. The guy put a camera, and they showed the video of the one guy. He didn't even say anything. He just put his camera in his face. He's frustrated. They had this season. You've, we've had a lot of people from Kevin Durant and everybody saying, you ran Durant out of there. The team's a mess. You get Paul George and Carmelo. It doesn't work, and you're bowing out of the first round of the playoffs. Russell Westbrook melted down. I definitely don't think this killed his brand. I, this was not a good look, but to say he's gone from this iconic figure who got triple doubles in two straight seasons to now nobody likes me. I, I don't think it's that bad. However, and, and I've heard, and Stephen, you obviously played in the league, but I've always heard from players, Utah, Indiana, where you played, I heard was bad with, with players, and Detroit was terrible. So I don't doubt that Russ was hearing some of the things he was saying. However, you can't jump on just random fans. And if the reports are true, that the one fan just said, how your ankles, and Russ went at him. And the other fan was just shooting video. That was bad for Russ, and I think the NBA should investigate it. And if it's if the reports are true and nothing was said, he should get fined heavily. But I don't think this is like a career. They'll do nothing career because Adam changes. Silver will do nothing to any of these players. Yeah, you're exactly right. They will, they will not do nothing. It's been going on for years. Uh, no, to do something to Russ. Russ. They will not do nothing to Russ, or they will not even... Um, investigate if something was said to him, racial or not. They won't even investigate it. I played in Utah in the playoffs, Golden State. Cut out size, life size, with my face on it, cardboard with a jail suit, right under the basket. And the, and the TV view, where everybody can see it every time we shot a free throw. No NBA personnel, no Utah personnel came down and told the guy to take it down. If that was LeBron's face, anybody else's face, they would have came and took that down, especially been in, in TV camera view. They didn't take it down. I went and signed it after the game because the guy wasn't that type of fan. He was actually a good Utah fan, a diehard fan. He wasn't being disrespectful. It was other people in there that were saying racial things and saying stuff about our families, but not this guy. But this is the type of stuff you deal with. They're not gonna say anything because it's not affecting the game. You know, I think Russ clearly got outplayed. Donovan Mitchell was the best player in that series, and Russ got rattled. He, lost, he totally lost his composure in the whole series because Donovan Mitchell was dominating. That's one thing, but you cannot say that he didn't hear anything disrespectful or racial about that because it happens in I mean, Utah. He can't go off on those fans. That, that, those that, two look like they didn't see That wasn't the okay, situation. Let me ask you this. Let's say all these players were 12 years old. Let's just shrink it. They're little kids. And there was a little kid that was talented and had a bad series and got mad at fans or parents. You'd be like, that kid's a spoiled brat. Right? Okay. Isn't that my complaint about Russ? Joe Presti, Sam Presti? Won't knock Billy Donovan. Kevin Durant went to them and said, we got a problem here. He has been completely spoiled and enabled. Of course he acts like that. Did, did, did Kevin Durant ever come out publicly and say did, Russell was a big problem? No, no. He, he well, was the reason why I left. No, no, okay, no. so we got to stop saying that. No, but because it was... Because Katie didn't, Katie didn't actually say that. He left because of a lot of reasons. He never came out and said, Russ was the reason I'm leaving. Well, but remember, a lot of people in public view don't want to get crushed in the media, so they won't go public. But when he left, there was two articles, one of which said KD had complained to the front office, hey, can you talk to him? I'm getting shots in the corner with one second on the shot clock. 
You know, he's, I think we'd all agree, Russ, like you said, mm -hmm. he, this series got upstairs with him. It, yeah, he went he got outplayed. He, he got, got outplayed. outplayed and he went sideways. The, the only thing I heard about KD wanting out, because I'm with you, KD's never said that publicly. I did hear for his last few years there, he had a problem with Scotty Brooks and then Billy Donovan for not talking to Russ. Mm -hmm. Like, look, Russ, in the Everybody's last four minutes, we got to make sure yeah. KD gets his shots. KD was upset with that. And you're right. Maybe he could have said something to Russell. Everybody's afraid of Russell Westbrook. And we keep pampering this dude. And again, the, the behavior keeps getting worse and worse and worse. It does. Worse. It keeps... And because we keep pampering. And, 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 and as it relates to fans saying things in, in the arenas or whatever, man, people are making a lot of money and you're turning over your happiness and your behavior to some idiot who doesn't make, doesn't have nearly as much on the line as you, and so all it takes is a guy in the stands to yell something to you, and you lose your composure and go off and want to get physical with a fan? That can't be the standard. At some point, sticks and stones, and words just don't harm you, and they don't dictate your behavior or action and your response. Because there's an idiot doesn't mean you have to, oh, well, let me go be an idiot, too. That, that's the standard that if Russ is excused, oh, I got yelled at it, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't justify it. It doesn't justify it. We all know. I went in the stands. I was involved in the yeah. bra in the stands. You have to have tough skin, but it's no way that me being a man can tell you as another man how to handle a situation when you feel disrespected. I can't tell you how to handle it. You only can handle it. And money, but, hold up. Money, you can pay me all the money in the world. I'm still a man first. So you can't say you paying me money and I have Steven, to shut up because I'm disrespected. Steven, it don't work like that. Malice it don't in the work Palace like that. was an unsafe environment. I defended the players. I, 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 I defended I all like you guys. Steven. I did. <laughs> Nobody, no. I, well, I didn't but hear it. That, well, no, no. <laughs> Nobody I, defended When I worked this. at the other network and that happened, I said, time out. Th this was unsafe for players. That was a goofball fan between me and you going, hey, how do your ankles feel? So if, 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 if spit hit my face, oh, I'm definitely saying something. Okay. If the fa look, if that, See what fan, I'm saying? if that fan has said something racial to Russ or something about his family, his kids, his wife or something, I have no problem with what Russ did. But if he just said, how's your ankles, or if the guy's just taking it, yeah, that's you know, weak. That's then, weak. then you can't that's weak go on off Russ on I'll just yeah. go to this point because we got to move on. But if we're going to be controlled by our feelings, it's going to be a long haul in America and anywhere in the globe. That, if, if all it takes, oh, he hurt my feelings, so therefore I have to do this. We got to control our own feelings because if we leave it to other people to yeah. dictate how we feel, mm -hmm. they're always going to be in control well, of us. Don't expect me to be, be, be a bigger person because I'm not. It's not about being a bigger person. I'll never be. Somebody it's about who's going to be in control of your happiness. You or someone else. And I'm in control of responding when I put this in <laughs> Trust me. I'm, I feel you, Russ. I feel you. All right, Whitlock, bad look for Mello? I don't have a problem with it, and I'm gonna explain why. Because unlike any of you here, I've actually spent time in Oklahoma City, and I know exactly what he's talking about. Again, players don't like Oklahoma City. That's true. The NBA is the wrong city for Oklahoma City, and I apologize to people in Oklahoma. I'm friends with you. It's a college town. It has no business being in the NBA business. Russell Westbrook feels like he's doing them a favor by being there. That's why he acts out. Carmelo Anthony just told you, like, my God, I'm here in Oklahoma City, no, and you think I'm gonna come off the bench? That's what the mentality no, is. It's not a great NBA city. It's you a know, terrible. I've been one. there a lot, but they sell that place out. Great. Like I, I'm not look. And when you still got to go home in Oklahoma City. Here's the thing, that was a blessing in disguise for Oklahoma City. Yeah. For Melo to say that, if I'm Sam Presti, Billy Don, I'm inviting him to dinner tonight. Yes. And I'm saying Melo. We want you to come off the bench next year. Yeah. I act like I ain't even here. We want you to come off the bench. And if he wants to opt out, great. Get us off that $28 million <laughs> exactly. and go somewhere That's else. It. And Melo, I, Melo's a first ballot Hall of Famer to me. But he's going to be in his 16th year. He's done as a franchise cornerstone. I don't know where he could go. If he doesn't want to accept the role, I don't. It's gonna be like Allen Iverson. Oh, he come off the like, bench in a real city. It's just not Oklahoma City. He's I, not giving well, all. Well, then that let, opt out of that twenty-eight million. You, I don't. Who's giving up twenty-eight million? Melo has not given up twenty-eight million. He's gonna come off that bench. And this is my thing. Okay, I can. I would rather him come out and say, I was upset with how the offense was ran this year. I didn't. I wasn't put in the positions. I, I didn't get as many post ups. Because we all know he's yeah. better. He's a better post up player than the pick and roll player, which they made him this year. I would have been happy with him saying that. 
The offense wasn't right. I, if, if I do come off the bench, we need to make more plays. Well, I'm more of an uh, a option coming with that second group. I would have respected that. But this, we know you're not going to give up no $28 million. Wipe your eyes, Melo. Give him some soup and, and, and get better, <laughs> bro. Nobody want to hear all that He's about you not happy. Bad, right? I did all this. I moved here by myself. So what? But give, me, give me $28 million to move to OKC. I'll be happy. Bells ringing, wearing uh, OKC gear every day, happy. <laughs> for about a week. No, for the no, whole year. For 28 no, no, million, for about you would a week. be for 82 games in Oklahoma. For 82 games. And you ain't there. Half I told you. The we're, season, half I, the season, you in other cities. I, Money's the motivation. That other I told half, you that. man. I'm just <laughs> that other an NBA player, young, a relatively Russ young. Russ is there. What? 28 million. And Russ wins. is from LA. That's because that's because he doesn't prioritize a lot of other things that most NBA players do. A good social life, things like that. Oklahoma City is not made for the <sighs> modern day NBA. It's the time worst out, city out, in the out. NBA. Put me in Utah you and give me 28 like million. Indianapolis is all that. It's in better than Oklahoma yeah. City. Time out. Well, time out. Is, I play in Benghazi. Is, is Green Bay a good NFL city? No, it's not. Take but me to Syria. We're talking, we're talking about the NBA. Durant stayed there for 10 years. We're talking about Allen Iverson's league. Oklahoma City does not fit. Now, I'm just telling you. Harden, Harden would have you stayed there. They offered him the mail up out they, of But they didn't offer because they shortchanged him financially. Okay, he's see, in Houston. give me five million. I'm <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. I'm there all the time. He's in Happy. Houston. I get Harden hanging the treasures after games. You don't have that in Oklahoma yeah. City. He lies. It's, 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 oh, a, whole, stuff. it's they, a whole they, they, different they, they, mentality. Aaron Rodgers is the biggest American superstar in the NFL. He's like Hollywood-looking guy. He's living in the suburbs in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. For like eight months Probably a year. We're having two different conversations. <laughs> we talking hip-hop and you talking rock and roll. <laughs> Oklahoma City's a rock and roll town. Yes. The NBA is a hip-hop league and Oklahoma City ain't it. Melo ain't wasn't it. the one to bring that argument, though. Not he's, after the way he's been playing at this stage of his career. I get, but that is what he's thinking. I'm just telling you. When he's sitting there, man, I done sacrificed everything. I'm in Oklahoma City if in the middle George of nowhere. If Paul George don't say that, I don't want to hear from a 35-year-old Melo. No Paul no George better not say anything until he hits a shot again. <laughs> Playoff <laughs> Pete. <laughs>